Hello and welcome to Tele Islas News with the most relevant and important news of the day. The ICT ministry continues to carry out different activities in the department. On this occasion, it delivered computers and gave a report on the connectivity in the islands. In total, there were 3,500 computers delivered to students of public school of the island of San Andres and Providence, 2,000 with resources from the ICT ministry, and 1,500 in partnership with the government. Minister Karen Abudinen announced that the department is preparing to be the first in the country to achieve that every child has a computer. 100% of the children of San Andres will have their own computer. Today we are delivering 1,000 computers, but by July 30, everyone will have their own computer so that they can continue dreaming big, so that they can continue doing things, so that they can continue transforming and continue influencing the department. The official explained that this second group of computer equipment will be delivered between July and August, but each child must be enrolled, must be studying. There will no longer be any excuse for not preparing for lives because each computer has all the tools our children need to be better, as emphasized by the head of the ICT portfolio. Likewise, Abudinen pointed out that four months after the devastating cause by the Hurricane Iota, 100% of the base station in San Andres has been reestablished in the island, and all the sectors have been put into operation. In all Providence, there are 12 base stations functioning with the operation of seven definitive one and five temporary sites that comes with 72 operational sectors out of the total of 86. That is 83.7% of the operational in sectors. Finally, the ICT minister revealed that three weeks ago she requested the Superintendents of Industry and Commerce and the Communication Regulation Commission a market and tariff study in relation to the service provided by the submarine fiber optic cable on the archipelago in view of the high cost which which the operator Energia Integral Andina provides the service. And the non-functioning of some traffic lights in the department has been causing problems in traffic flow, a situation that has the community concerned and demands the prompt repair of these lights. The island community is concerned about the delays in the repair of traffic lights on the island, a situation that has caused problems in the flow of vehicles. I believe it is a lack of management. I think they are necessary. They could avoid several accidents here on the island of San Andres. I believe there is an urgent need for the traffic lights to be operational again. Since the traffic lights have been on the island, they have made people have more control when driving. And now that they are not there, people drive a little crazy and can cause accidents. Because sometimes you are on the road and people get in the way and pass by. So we have to look for a solution and fix it. The governor in charge gave a statement on the delays in the repair work of the traffic lights that were affected by Hurricane Iota, indicated that this is due to some legal loopholes. No se han recuperado aún porque... They have not been recovered yet because of the history of the contracting in terms of public lighting and traffic lights. There are some loopholes that do not allow the administration to pay for the traffic light service. So we have to work on a contract that includes the maintenance service for the traffic lights. The issue of the traffic lights with the new contracts, we are going to see how we align that situation. And if we have a debt with MDSI, we are going to review it with the Treasury Department to make the payments so that they can move forward on the corresponding repairs. The island's governor asked to put into practice a good citizen culture when driving while the traffic lights are being repaired. He also indicated that there will be 25 blue agents who will be taking care of the vehicle order. And after several hours of keeping the main street of Linval and Cove black due to water shortages, residents of the sector received a response from the Veolia service provider who offered water tanks to the inhabitants. However, for the Linval and Cove community, the solution to the problem is to define the constant arrival of the precious liquid since they have been in the same situation for many years. Water shortage afflict more than 12 families in the sector of Linval and Co-op. This is the reason why during the morning the inhabitants of the sector set up a blockade. Fortunately, during the afternoon the situation was controlled by Veolia, the service provider under the leadership of its manager, Elizabeth Young, who spoke on the issue. 
se dio porque cerca de 12 casas. About 12 houses in the process of renovation of networks of the ACFIN. The third request the service. The initiative was made to them. The respective meters were installed, but they say that when the water reaches the sector, the houses are not receiving the water. Young assured that the agreement reached today was to supply water to 12 houses. Y en el próximo suministro que está programado para... In the next supply that is scheduled for Friday, if there are no technical problems, we will check house by house to see what the problems are and why they are not receiving water when the rest of the houses are receiving it. Finally, she said that the sector is supplies from the tank located in Mission Hill and they have a continuity of once every 20 days. An unfortunate event left an 89-year-old tourist dead who a minor who was driving responsible on a motorcycle ran over him, leaving him seriously injured and without medical possibilities to be stabilized. An 89 years old tourist died after being run over in the morning by a minor from the island. According to the medical report, the man suffered a severe craniocephalical trauma, a close abdominal trauma. He arrived in bad condition and was transferred from the Villarreal clinic. He died at 11.48 in the morning after the attempt of doctors to save his life. Family members explain what happened. It's tipo 9 in the morning, we were going to enjoy the beach. About 9 o'clock in the morning, we were going to enjoy the beach. Yesterday we arrived. We were walking when a young man passed by on a motorcycle and almost crashed. He flipped over and my father was trying to get out of his way and he ran over him, causing him multiple damages which later caused his death. After an hour and a half or two hours, we arrived as a group of 13 people and we left with 12 people. This is unfair. I want justice to be served. The visitor explained the situation when transferring his father to the island's emergency service. I took my dad and brought him to a clinic, and then they changed the motorcycle because they didn't have papers, because it was an AX100, and they brought papers from a BWIS. So I want this to be heard all over the island so that they can collaborate with us to transfer my dad to the city of Cali. People who want to collaborate with the travelers for the transfer of the body in the city of Cali may do so by contacting 320-6942-012. The inhabitants of Santa Isabel and Juan's Pine met this weekend with the mayor, part of his cabinet, and Findetero officials to talk about problems the communities are facing and to seek solutions. This past weekend, the mayor met with the community of Tone and Jones Point for about two hours in what is left of the Central Baptist Church, talking about the problems that afflict them and how the reconstruction is progressing. So we talk about the necessity of that to give the people a good tent, tent that they can really live in until they build a house, because the tent them that is they're giving right now, they're not good. They, they, they're blowing up, they're blowing with fan of the people them. Uh, and left everything outside the same way. Relocations, portable toilets, better tents, and the lack of water in the central sector were some of the topics. Uh, some of the people are, um, are having some difficulties with water, so uh, one of the, the, the team was the water, and um, they promised to uh, give a solution to that, to fertilize the, the, the truck them that is carrying water, that they will ubicate these people who are having difficulty so they can get the water to them. Finally, they talk about the volume of the music in some businesses and the street lights, which they promised to fix soon. That was a very positive um, moment, and I think we clear up those because sometimes when you look on uh, social media, you see a lot of information where it really is not wrong information, but when you get the information, then, uh, from the right people, from the government, from the one in who it will create in this process, I think you come out from there and you clear up uh, those. So far, it has not been defined where the next meeting with the community will be held. And today begins a special historical material, Heritage of the Raisal People, which focuses on the subject of the underwater heritage of old providence in the midst of the dredging. The community of the department expressed its concern for the protection and the state of archaeological artifacts. 
It's a project awarded in 2016 with the goal of deepening the maritime access channel and the maneuvering basin in World Providence. The works has taken on greater importance after the passage of Hurricane Iota since it is expected to guarantee and expedite the entry of larger vessels with supplies for the reconstruction of the island. However, some sectors have shown their concerns since the access channel that is being dredged as well as the maneuvering that coincides with the colonial access channel that has been used since the 16th century and that in its bottom lies 400 years of the Raisal people heritage. But which institution is guaranteeing the protection or the state of the archaeological heritage of the Raisal people? We have a big problem here in two islands. We lost in our patrimony and we lost in our history. During the olden time, they used to, archaeologists used to come to this place and exploit and take out a lot of treasure and different things and go with it and no one knew about it. And in this moment when they're making a dredging, dredging out there in the, in the harbor between Old Providence and Catalina, uh, we know that a lot of things is out there. And what has me very worried is that the things, the elements or objects that they find, we don't know who controlling it, where it's going. Some members of the community think that they have skipped the proper process of collecting archaeological material and that they have not been informed. They took the decision to skip the rescue of the archaeological material and start work. This is very worrying because it makes us lose a lot of materials that are in the underwater that will allow us to visibilize our history that has been hidden for a long time. It seems to be the government intention to continue hiding this information with this course of action that is being carried out silently and behind the community's back. We don't know who, where those things is, if they have an inventory, who taking it up, if the government, local or international government, have any, have any experience to say what we can do with that. In every part of the world, when they make this kind of ex uh, exploitation, the government have to control all those things.